Who do you think the biggest heroes are? Well, I think the heroes are, are uh, Bernanke. I think Paulson's a hero. I think Geithner's a hero. I, I, you know, you can look back and say you could have done this a little differently or that a little differently, but at the time I called it an economic Pearl Harbor, and in the end, we got through Pearl Harbor, and, and, and it could have turned out a lot differently. There are some people, including Meredith Whitney, who say we've just kicked things down the road, that the banks are, are still struggling, that we have a lot of problems that could still come up from credit cards, from other areas, from consumers getting pinched for um, needing credit. Are we through the worst of it? In oh, well, I think we're certainly we're, we're through the worst of on residential real estate in all probability. And, 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 and the reason is we're building a lot fewer houses than we're, than we're forming households. So that solves itself over time. It doesn't do it in a day or a week, but it solves itself. So we're further on that. We're going to have unusual losses in credit cards and in commercial real estate and all of that. But we're a lot better off than we were a year ago. I mean, for one thing, some of the, some of the toxic assets have been flushed through. There's been capital raised. There's, we're immeasurably better than we were uh, off than we were a year ago. But is there a risk of a second downturn? Will unemployment levels climb to a point where it becomes a leading indicator rather than a lagging indicator? I, I think the odds are very much against it getting significantly worse. It's sort of plateaued at the at the bottom right now. But if you've got some horrible exogenous event, some, some you know, 9-11 uh, type event or worse, uh, you know, you could have something that would be dis really disruptive and start things all over again. But in terms of the problems that we've identified and that are working with, we've got more to come. But we're, 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 past, the, uh, we're past the critical point. What are the most important economic indicators that you watch? If there, is there a series of numbers? Are there some statistics that you look at most closely? Well, I look at our businesses every day, but I, I look at everything. I mean, I, I look at car loanings, I look at the Fed's balance sheet, whatever it may be. I mean, and, and we have not bounced, uh, but we've put going down. I mean, and, and it, it, the world will come back. I've never been able to tell whether it's going to be a week or a month or six months, but we are on the mend. And, and if you look at at housing prices and activity in the mid to lower price range, it changed dramatically from, from, a, from a year ago. We're seeing some stability. All right, let me go at this another way. Let's pretend you're on a desert island for a month. There's only one set of numbers you can get. What would it be? Well, I would probably uh, look at perhaps freight car loadings and perhaps uh, and, and truck uh, tonnage moved. And, uh, but I'd want to look at a lot of figures. <laughs> You are the biggest shareholder. Berkshire Hathaway is the biggest shareholder in Kraft. Is the Kraft bid to go after Cadbury a good one? Well, it's a pretty full one. I mean, uh, uh, Kraft, Kraft has got, anytime you're in a takeover, you know, the, the animal spirits run high on all of that. But Kraft has the disadvantage of using a, an undervalued stock. So if, you, if part of your currency is a stock that's worth more money than it's selling for, and you're, you're paying full negotiated value for the other guys, property and you wouldn't sell your own property for anything like the market price it's it's a it makes it a tough game so it's it's a full price or is that makes it sound like as if you're not in favor of this bid no I, I I've got a lot of confidence in Irene Roosevelt she'll uh, but they have to do a lot of things right to justify this price what do you think about the uh, the talk towards health care and where things are headed right now well I think that unfortunately I think that we have we're really talking about reforming health insurance more than health care. So uh, the incentives that produce the 16 or so percent of GDP that's going to health care, I don't think, unfortunately, they're, getting, they're going to get changed much. So I think that we really are not talking as much about reforming health care as we're talking about reforming the insurance. And I think that will be an opportunity missed if we don't do more about looking at what what the incentives are in the present system and what they would be in an ideal system. Okay. And then finally, if, if you had to give a gauge of where you stand on the economy again right now versus what you were thinking three months ago, is it the same? Is it better? It, it hasn't gotten worse. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gotten much better either. But the very fact that time is passing, it's, it's gotten better in residential real estate. That's important. Mm -hmm. uh, certain things haven't hit much yet, commercial real estate, for example. But we are moving through a recession, and, and, and I see nothing that makes me worry about the fact that it's going to be worse than I would have thought three months ago.